Welcome back everybody. So we're going to start breaking down individual locations of Italy to to visit, to see, to get ideas up for. Um, this was another video here from Mr. Ryan Shirley. We've done, I believe, one, maybe two videos on this channel reacting to his things because he does fantastic work. Uh, these are the top 10 places to visit in Tuscany. This is Tuscany only, not Italy entirely. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited here. I, I think Florence is in Tuscany because it looks like Florence in the background right there, but I'm very excited to get into this. Let's just go ahead and hop right into the video. What's up guys? My name is Ryan and I just got back from exploring Tuscany yes, and I want to show you my favorite wow. places. So here's my Tuscany top 10. Tuscany is easily one of the most fascinating regions in all of Italy. Located in the central part of the country, Tuscany is known for its landscapes, history, and artistic legacy. It's a land full of rolling hills yes, dotted sir. with medieval hilltop towns. From the so thermal good. hot springs of Saturnia to the Renaissance city of Florence, okay. Tuscany right. is a place that needs to be experienced. Let's start this video off in San Gimignano. Now located about an hour's drive from Florence, San Gimignano is a stunning medieval city perched upon a hill. One of the most iconic features of the city is its medieval watchtowers. Currently, there are 14 watchtowers still standing, but during its prime, there were over 72 towers, with the highest Jeez. being over 70 meters tall. The towers were built as a result of competing families who wanted to build the tallest and most grand tower. Can't imagine how it must have looked like back then. It was the Manhattan of the Middle Ages. It was so fun to walk through the city. I mean, you literally feel like you're going back in oh, time. Oh, I love it. San Gimignano flourished as a city until 1348 when the plague of Black Death struck the town, which resulted in killing over half the population. San Gimignano's medieval vibe has been untouched throughout time and it's become one of the most popular medieval locations <laughs> in all of Italy. Afterwards, we're going to visit the huh. nearby city of Siena. Located about a 40 minute drive from San Gimignano, it's built upon three hills with its central feet feature being the Piazza oh, del Campo. This public square cities. was once a Roman They're forum just... and it was rebuilt in the 13th century. I, I'm on repeat if you look closely, you can... I'm gonna pause this so I don't wanna hear anything. I, 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 I'm seriously on repeat every time I talk about Italy. And I know it's not just Italy, it's Europe in general, but look at the cities and how they're laid out. Like this massive courtyard, it's like... I just, I love the architecture so much. It, it, just, it puts anything modern cities to shame. You can see it's made of nine sections, which represents the Council of Nine. The impressive Tower of Mangia overlooks the plaza. It's over 87 meters high, and it takes 500 steps to reach the top. Now, twice a year, the square hosts the wild Palio di Siena horse race around the edge of the piazza. Nice. I would love to see that one day. Now, another yeah. one of my favorite features of the city is the Duomo di Siena. It's a visually stunning church that was completed all the way back in 1246. The interior blue. Duomo. I've heard that word a few times. I heard one in Florence. Is it? Is it just another name for like a cathedral or a massive church? Am I getting that right? I know he's kind of explaining. It. I should, I should shut up and listen. But am I, am I, am I right with that? My mind with its black and white pillars and endless artwork, and I couldn't recommend Siena enough. You're gonna fall in love with this medieval city. Now, right in between Siena and San Gimignano is another really cool medieval town called Monte Regioni. It's one of the best Monterey medieval Germany. walled fortresses I've seen. It was built all the way back in 1219 by the people of Siena to act as a front line in the wars against Florence. Afterwards, we're going to explore the region of Val d'Orcia. Now, when you think of Tuscany, this is what you'll probably what imagine. Of, right Rush, there. rolling hills, perfectly aligned cypress trees, and those picturesque hilltop towns. This is easily one of the most scenic parts of Tuscany. Now, Val d'Orcia starts in the hills of South Siena and extends to Monte Amiata. Now, one of my favorite towns in Val d'Orcia is Pienza. Now, looking about an hour... Did you see that? The fog and everything, and it's just sitting there right on top of it, just saying, What's up? Here I am. That's just... First drive from Siena, so Pienza is a picture-perfect town built upon a hill. The town was first mentioned in the 9th century, but during the 15th century, the entire village was rebuilt to be a renaissance town to serve as a retreat from Rome. It's one of the first villages to implement urban planning, granting it the nickname the touchstone of renaissance urbanism. I just love how the city overlooks all the surrounding yes. landscapes. 
One really cool place right below the city is where the iconic shot of Gladiator was filmed. Okay. I just remember watching that movie and thinking how cool it would be to explore Tuscany. Now just 20 minutes from Pienza is the town of Monte Pociano. Built high atop a limestone ridge, this medieval renaissance towns. town They're not is sure to take cities. you back in time. From 1390 to the mid 16th century, Monte Pociano enjoyed a prosperous period as architects built luxury homes and renaissance buildings. Today, it's one of the most popular towns in the region. It's where part of the movie Twilight New Moon was filmed. If you're into drinking, Monte Pociano is home to some of Italy's best red wines. I mean, the town is just so impressive to me. Definitely one of my favorites in Tuscany. Now, afterwards, we're going to visit the Saturnia Hot Springs. Now, located about a three hours drive from Florence, these are some of the coolest looking hot springs Tuscany I've ever massive, seen. The man. water is this milky blue still color <laughs> and it drains down mineral terraces. The water is a warm 37 degrees Celsius all year round thanks to thermal activity of a nearby volcano. The Romans used to bathe here to experience the hot springs healing effects. Today they are free to visit all year round and one of Tuscany's most beautiful attractions. I went here a few weeks ago and it was freaking packed. Granted it was during the middle of the day during the peak of summer. I'd say if you want to avoid the crowds I recommend coming to the hot springs super early in the morning or during the off season in spring or autumn. Nonetheless it's still fun to be there. The water felt so good and I couldn't believe the turquoise blue color. Such an incredible spot you gotta visit if you're in Tuscany. Afterwards, we're going to visit the nearby town of Pitigliano. Now, located about a 30 minute drive from Saturnia, Pitigliano is a historic city perched upon a volcanic rock. It's believed that the area around Pitigliano so was inhabited during Etruscan times, and in the 1600s, the town started to grow a large Jewish presence as some Jews fled from persecution in Rome, giving it the nickname of Little Jerusalem. Today, Pitigliano is a quaint town. I just love how it's built upon those cliffs. Yes. Such a sight to see. Now just 10 minutes away is another interesting village called Serrano. Now similar to Pitigliano, it is built upon volcanic rock and due to its strategic it's position, it's like they look at a, a giant rock and they say, I'm going to put a building on that. And then they just say, yeah, we're going to put like 100 buildings on that and we're going to call it a town. It's just, it just bad. I, I love it. I don't understand how they, how they can do it. And we just, we can't seem to do it now, but they could do it, you know, eight, 900 years ago. Times. I love it so as a result, much. it became one of the most well-fortified villages in southern Tuscany. When you go there, you'll feel like you're back in time as you explore this alluring village. Now afterwards, we're going to go visit the famous town of Pisa. Pisa. Now located about an hour's drive from Florence, Pisa is known worldwide for its leaning tower. The tower is over 55 meters tall and has a lean of nearly 4 degrees. The tower was completed all the way back in 1372. The lean is caused by an unstable foundation that has been a problem ever since it's been constructed. I'm just impressed that they've been able to keep it from falling over all these say, years. Is it's it definitely a risk wonder of, falling of the over? world and you gotta witness it at least once in your life. For our final destination, we're gonna visit the iconic city of Florence. I have to say that Florence is my favorite city in all of Italy. It's considered to be the birthplace of the Renaissance and it was the most important political, cultural, and economical city in Europe and the world during that time. The I've history of the city is one city endless, to go to. and without its influence, our world would probably be very different today. Now one thing that makes Florence magical is that almost the entire city is made up of medieval buildings which really transports you back in time. One of the most impressive sites in Florence is the Duomo. So I, and I when you it. look at it, yeah. you just can't believe how big it is. It was completed in 1436 and just amazes me that they were able to engineer such a big dome so long ago. The people of Florence sure dreamt big. I the Ponte it. Vecchio Bridge is another historic site. It's where the famous poet Dante encountered his love Beatrice and also was the only bridge on the Arno River that wasn't destroyed in World War II. The Palazzo Vecchio is another site you gotta see. Now to get the best view of all Florence, I recommend you go to the Piazzale Michelangelo. You'll be able to get panoramic views of the city. I mean, I just can't say enough good things about wow. Florence. You're gonna fall in love with this enchanting city. Well, that is it for my Tuscany top 10. It's such a fascinating region. Ryan, I wish I could visit once all again, these towns man, and attractions. Great work. Let me know where your favorite place I, is in Tuscany in the comments below. I started a second channel where I post. I need to let this finish. I'll gather my thoughts. Relaxation films of beautiful places around the world. I'll be doing a film on Tuscany very soon. 
You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan, and we will see you later. Great job, Ryan. Once again, seriously, great job. Um, when I look at when I look at Tuscany, I look at the hills and the, the rolling landscapes, and I, I just I picture myself there with a small farm and a little garden just being self-sufficient. That's what I picture. Um, I would love to go to the cities and I would hundred if I ever got the opportunity I would 100% go to Florence and and I would try to you know make it to the little towns that he was talking about there but I I'm just you know I live in the country I'm I just a country boy of heart and I would love to have just a little farm and a small garden and just and just be self-sufficient man but you know I, as per usual, as with every video I see on here, Italy is just gorgeous. This wasn't my best reaction in the world to it because I was just like, because it's just so beautiful. But thank you all so much for watching. Uh, go ahead and, and leave a like on the video if you like what you've seen. Let me know in the comments down below, um, you know, if he missed any spots in Tuscany or, you know, if you have any other locations or if you agree with him, disagree with him, any certain areas within Florence that I need to check out, like certain buildings or, or, or food shops, anything like that. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It helps me out tremendously, and you can always unsubscribe at any time. Hopefully you don't, though. Um, and it is free. So thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate it so very, very much, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys.